So at this point we've got our customized menu and it shows our shop in a little more friendly way instead of the sterile products and all of that. But you might have noticed something, that when you go look at your cakes and it displays all your cakes, below it there's an area for comments. Again, WordPress was built from the ground up specifically as a blogging tool where comments are an important part of that. Um, but it's being a little bit of a detriment to us in that every new page that we create will automatically have, give us the ability for people to comment on. We probably don't want that. We only want uh, comments on our blog post items. So this is really where you have to decide how to handle this because here we have a chicken or the egg thing. Either we can turn off all comments and then just turn them off as necessary for our blog posts, for example. The problem with that is we have to remember to turn on the comments for all of our new blog posts. The other way to do it is to leave comments on and therefore everything gets comments and then we have to remember to turn off comments for the things we don't want. So you have to decide which of those is less of a hassle because they're both a hassle. <laughs> right now we've got it leave comments on. Everything gets comments. And then we go in and turn off comments as necessary. Perhaps that's the one I recommend a bit more. Because you're probably not going to be creating a lot of new pages once you do the initial setup. But you probably will be creating more blog posts. And I don't want to remember to turn on those comments. I just want my blog posts to already have comments ability. That's the one I would recommend. Again, and the opposite would be turn off all comments which would turn these off right here, and you have to remember to turn them back on as, as necessary. So what I'm going to recommend is let's leave comments on, and I'll show you how to turn off comments <laughs> on a case-by-case -case basis. Where is the leave, leave comments on for all? Where is that located? I'll get to it. Okay. So let's say we want to turn off comments for these brand new pages that we created, pies, cookies, PDFs. We want to turn that off. So let's go back to our pages. And this is one of the, one of the parts where quick edit really shines. Hover over cakes, and you have edit and quick edit. Click on quick edit. Allow comments. turn it off. So that's what we would do for every page. Allow comments and then update it. You quick edit any page or even post if you want. You quick edit any page, turn off allow comment, update. So now there's no more comments for cakes. You quick edit cookies, turn off allow comments, and so forth. Now, as we're on this quick edit screen, we get a lot of very useful things here that we might, we might gloss over. But notice, here's where you can quickly change the text that appears uh, on the title of the document or the slug, which is the address, the URL. We can change our dates, future publish it, or change the date previously. Let's say you wanted to do a, uh, you, you want for some reason your page to have it that it was first published on January 1st, but you didn't get to it until January 2nd. You could go back here and change its date so that it was published back on January 2nd. Notice we do have the ability to set up a password. This is not as powerful as some of these plugins, though, that create a whole login system with payments and all of that. This simply s uh, makes a page have a, a password, but no easy way for then people to sign up for this password. You have to have like uh, MailChimp or something so that people can subscribe to your website and then you can send them the password. It's pretty cumbersome. But what I'm saying is that you can make pages have a password. You just have to figure out the way to get them that password. I'm not going to get into that because that's 
more trouble than it's worth, I think. You can set items to private and that stuff. The point is that we're setting this no comments. If you want to deactivate a page so that people don't access it, you can change the status from published to draft. And then what happens is it'll remove it from public view. It won't delete the page, but it'll keep it inside of your dashboard until you're ready to show it again. And that I would recommend instead of deleting a page because then you lost all that work. <coughs> so this is the way that I would say, go in and turn off the comment ability per page. If we wanted to go for the nuclear option and turn off completely all comments and then do the opposite of turning on comments, we would do it this way. It's found under the settings, discussion. So under the settings menu, <laughs> discussion, Up on the top here, uh, default article settings, allow people to post comments on your articles. These settings may be overridden uh, for individual articles. So if you turn that off, any new articles that you create, which are posts and pages, will not have the ability to do comments. And you have to remember that when you do post a new blog post, turn on comments. So it's conceivable, and I've done it also, but you have, to, you have to know what you're doing. As soon as you install WordPress, you can turn that off. And then add your About page, your Contact page, your Products page, etc., etc. Add all the pages. And then they don't have comments. And then remember to turn this back on once you're done with that, so that your blogs <coughs> that you create in the future will have the comment ability. But then if you do add a new page... Exactly. You have to remember to go back and turn off that comment. So it's not an easy answer to... to so you said you can do it globally and then go back to a page under the page. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly so. Discussion. So you have to decide which of these is less hassle. And usually the way I do it is I, I leave this on and then I go in and turn off comments where I don't need them. Usually, maybe it's 10 pages, maybe it's 15. That's not so bad. Because if I, as I, throughout the months and years that I had blog posts, I don't want to remember every time to turn the comments back on. You know, a week after I published something and I'm still not getting comments, oops, I didn't turn comments on. I lost that week. Uh, so I would rather just go in and turn it off. And even if people are already adding a comment to my about page, well, I can just turn the comments off and they're gone. So no big deal. I'm confused. So it doesn't. So if you uncheck the, the under quick edit, uncheck the um, comments mm -hmm. on that page only, it wouldn't do it for all of the articles, or just no. this no. per article. Per article. That's what quick edit is doing. Quick edit is turning out comment for that article. Okay. This is the global one. But notice it's still limited because it says allow people to post comments on new articles. So if I were right now to turn this off, this would not deactivate comments for my other pages that already had comments on. It's only for new articles. All right, while we're in the settings, let's change something here that's also a bit nagging. Let's go to general. Settings general. There's the tagline. In a few words, explain what the site is about. Depending on your theme, that may show up or not. Our theme it is. I've dealt with themes that that doesn't show up, but I would still change it because it's still internally in there somewhere, and I'm paranoid that it's my site's going to show up on Google with just another WordPress site. <laughs> so it is recommended to change that. And you could, uh, you know, you have 
as much space as you want here, but I would keep it within the boundaries of the home page's description. Remember, um, our home page, or now we call it welcome, but our welcome page over here on Yoast, this SEO title, or the description, but again, there's not a lot of space up here. Notice that just under the WordPress site is taking up just enough of that space. Perhaps keep it within that amount of text, or else you're going to get new lines. You know, you're going to have a little paragraph up there. I don't want a paragraph. Think about a tagline, a catchphrase. Uh, what can define your company in one sentence, in one concise sentence? And again, this is part of marketing, the art and the science of marketing. How can you define something? A company, a big old company like McDonald's or Nike, since they're so famous and they have this cachet, Nike is defined with just do it. If we had never heard of the athletic company Nike, uh, just do it could apply to anything. Your taxes, for example. But nowadays they're so connected with each other that that catchphrase is that company. So the art and the science of figuring out what is your company what can you do, how can you distill it down to one sentence and that's what i would say to put into that tagline right there so i'm just going to say something like east lake based bakery cuz that's just about the same size as uh, what was already there. I'll save that and then when we go look at the visit site, right there, East Lake Bakery, East Lake Bakery, Bakery. You know, art and science. I'm not going to stress it at the moment, but uh, on your own site you should. Did you refresh your, your screen here? Um, let's try one more time to see. Let's see. I'll go back to the top. Refresh it one more time. Perhaps something else was to change. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it if you did it right, but for some reason you're not showing. Something is not showing. Well, at least I got rid of just another word last night. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Now let's uh, shift gears and uh, deal with a few other things here. Uh, we've got these, we've got our products and our menu, and we've worked on the site a bit more. Uh, well, let's deal with the whole aspect of uh, buying the products, accepting payments. So if we were to test this, if we go over to Cakes and then add to Cart, Get the fancy box that appears there. Uh, actually, we'll do one more thing before that because let's say that a person here's I was saying something similar to this yesterday in my in my uh, app programming class. Uh, we have to try to figure out what are the many ways that the user can mess things up, meaning how can they go astray? We have this vision: a person's going to go to our site go to the shop, click a product, click buy, check out, and we get money. There's obviously many forks in the road to get from point A to point B, such as right here. I'm expecting, okay, a person will, will go to checkout and buy. No, they might go to continue shopping and then go over to cookies and think, well, I'm thinking of buying some snickerdoodles, but maybe I bought enough sugar for the day, so I want to go check out. 
there's no way to get to the checkout screen because we removed it from the menu. A person would have to add to cart and then get to that screen and remove it from the cart. Unacceptable. So we have to think, what are the possible ways that a person can use our site? And this is part of, uh, what's it called? This is part of um, user experience design. Uh, and there's another term also, uh, blanking on it. But uh, it's, it's, to, it's to test the site with real people. Not people that are working on the project because they're biased. Beta this testing. is beta testing, but there's specifically another term also. But beta testing works where you're testing your, your site with people that are not attached to, to the site. It could be the owner of the site and such, but that's still a little biased. This is regular people, you know, your friends and family. Check out this site and, you, and the big professional companies, and this is its own business where a company goes in to test your site and what they do is they get a group of people or individuals and they have a, a sheet with steps to do on this step. Please go in and buy a product and write your experience of it. And they collect that with like 20 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, 2 people. They collect the experience of trying to accomplish a task. And then over and over they see people are having a hard time getting to the shopping cart obviously here because we don't have that easy way to get to it. We've only got the fancy box, which is perfect if you're going to buy the product at this point and go quickly to, to check out and not browse. So actually let's fix that and then we'll talk about collecting payment. I want this go to checkout to be part of my menu. Yes? If they continue shopping, they can only takes you back to the same you know, yeah, it just closes itself. Continue shopping really only closes the box. It doesn't do anything. It just closes the box. So you can go anywhere after that. Yeah, you see here we're under cookies, add to cart, continue shopping, and it just keeps me there. It just closes that. Yeah, but this keeps you on that page. Mm -hmm. So you would have to go back up to the menu and select the different category from where the next cookies and Yeah. You do have to go to the menu. Actually, you can keep that hovering there and ignore it and go over here to cakes. Seems like the shopping isn't No, I think it's it lets people it gives it gives people the choice at that moment. Do I want to check out now? Am I done shopping? Okay. Or just continue shopping. One final thing, there's no, uh, I guess you would have to go on the code to change the, uh, of the child thing to going to move that continue shopping over. It puts yeah. it all one word. It does. Yeah, that would be editing the code. Or change the color or something. Yeah. So, okay. maybe change it to go to checkout or maybe close window or something. Yeah, but that would be editing code. So let's say uh, we want to make we want to add some redundancies. Redundancies are good in web design and, and most things because you have to think about what are the possible ways people can do it. Now there's an over you can get overboard. It could be too redundant, and then that's confusing too. So there's this balancing act: what is best for the user, what's best for the design. And so what I want to do is also make a checkout menu item here under shop. I want to have at the very bottom go to checkout, just like I have on the fancy box. And that'll be relatively easy, so we'll go back to dashboard and we'll go back to appearance menu. That's what we need to do. We need to add a new menu item. Luckily, we've already got one built in. Remember, WP Commerce creates a product page, an account page, a checkout page. Let's go to Appearance uh, Menus. Here it is on the left side. Checkout. Ultimately, Fancy Box is directing us to that screen. So all we need to do is also add that menu item to our current menu, rearrange it, and it'll work. So on the left side here, you should see Checkout. Click Add to Menu.
And then I think actually, where would it make more sense? Uh, the very first item or the last item? Well, the good thing is that you can add it there, save it, and then check it. And again, perhaps in that beta testing that you do, you're seeing that the 10 people that you looked at, seven of them didn't see it as the first item. And most of them saw it as the last item. So I can't exactly say which of these would work better. That's what the beta testing comes in for, but I'll put it at the end. Obviously, I would like it to be a different color. You know, maybe make it red where everything else is green, but that requires editing the code. <coughs> so there is no way to change the color on any of those menu items other than code? It seems like it. It seems that it seems that this theme theme has not given us that ability. Some themes, yeah, some themes will say we'll have a window here, you know, edit theme, and it'll give you the ability to edit all of that stuff. But this particular one doesn't seem to. So in short, when it, when a theme doesn't let you do something, you can still do it, but you'll have to hack the code. Question. Seems to be what? Bold. It's bold because you clicked on it? Maybe? So if you're viewing if you're viewing a particular item and you look at it on the menu, it should be bold. Could you do that under pages? So you did see that it was under that you were clicked on, yeah. Question. I was just wondering if you could do it under edit, you know, under pages, edit, or the word checkout is if there's a way to no, you do have to edit the menu because we wouldn't be that edit button down there would be to edit the page, not to edit the menu. The menu is universal and used through all pages. So you would want to edit it in the dashboard. All right, so did everyone get their menu item like this? You put the checkout, I put it at the end. It's indented, so it's a drop down of shock. Remember to save it. And now the user has a way always to get back to the checkout screen, not just perhaps waiting to get it from the fancy box. So we could make it a main item. Not you could. Shop. Yeah, you, it doesn't have to be a sub item. It could be, you know, not indented, but outside over here. Like that. Outdented, if that's a word. Uh -huh. And then uh, you'll see it right there. Check out. So it's up to you to decide on which will work for you, depending on the style of your site and all of that, because maybe the menu is getting too long. Most likely it's not an easy thing, because all that, all, all that we have here is the yeah. ability to, to do that. Now, there is a couple of tricks that I hesitate to get into because it is a little complicated. But you might be able to put the code directly here. That requires the setup for your picture on some server and then the link and all of that. So more complicated. But if you write stuff in here, if you write code in here, and, I, and it also depends on your theme, you could get symbols. All right, so anyway, we've got that set up now. I'm going to keep it as a sub-item, actually. Shop checkout. So let's go look at our checkout page. And now we deal with the whole issue of, uh, of making the checkout work.